Steve Dotto here, how the heck you doing this fine day? And I'm looking forward to today's video because I think it's a really important topic. We're gonna to talk about privacy and protecting your privacy inside of Google. And I said in the title, inside of Google Maps, and that's a little bit of a misnomer because we're really talking about protecting our location privacy, which we see most often reflected in Google Maps. Here's the challenge we face in protecting our privacy inside of the Google system, is when we are browsing the web, when we're sitting there on our computer and we have our browser open, we recognize that there's a very good chance that Google is tracking what we're doing and we are able to make decisions based on, for our privacy based on that fact that we're on the internet and we're probably being spied on at that point so we can make our own decisions about privacy then. However, when we are going about our normal day-to-day -day business in the real world, traveling to shops, going to, the, going to the movies, going to a play, getting on an airplane and flying somewhere, we don't think about protecting our privacy as much then because we aren't actively on the internet. We're not sitting there staring at a screen. But if we are signed into our Google account on our smartphone, be it Android or iOS, and, then, and we have location services turned on, which many of us do even if we don't know that it's turned on, well, then Google is tracking everywhere we're going. And I mean, everywhere that we're going, everything we're doing, every picture we take, Google documents it and attaches it to, the, to an agenda for that day or an itinerary for that day. So today I wanna to show you exactly what's happening so you can take control. Now, one caveat is I'm not gonna tell you here what you should be doing to protect your privacy. If you wanna share information with Google, if you don't mind Google tracking you, that's your business. And if you wanna shut down Google and you wanna protect your privacy more and you don't want them to see anything that you're doing, that is also your decision. What I wanna give you today in this video is the tools to arm yourself to make those decisions intelligently and to take control of the situation yourself. So shall we dive in? Let's do that. And we're gonna start on our smartphone. When we open Google Maps on our smartphone, be it iOS or Android, we can get into the menu system to control our privacy by tapping on our profile picture, which brings up the menu system for Google Maps. Now there's two menus that I wanna bring your attention to today. One of them is your timeline, and the other one is your data in Maps. If you tap on your timeline, you will see if you have location services turned on, you'll see everything that you've been doing today. And if you scroll back to yesterday, you'll see where you were yesterday and you'll see all of the information that Google is tracking. My phone, super boring because since 2019, I have had location services turned off on my phone. So Google knows nothing about what I've done or they haven't recorded anything that I've done since 2019. Uh, but if, as I say, if you have got location services turned on, you'll be able to see it immediately here and to start to interact with that data. Now, the other place that I mentioned is if we go back under the menu and we go into your data in Maps. Now, this brings us not into Google Maps, but instead this brings us into our main Google account. And you can see there it says Google Wide Controls. This is where Google, this is where we control our privacy within all of our different Google apps. And you can see right at the top here, it says location history. You can see mine is turned off. If I wanted to turn it back on, I would open it up and then I would turn it on using the menu items here. But I'm not gonna do that right now. I don't really want it turned on. What I wanna show you though, is historically the information that was stored prior to my turning Google, the, the uh, location history off. So if I tap on see and delete activity, that's gonna bring me into my historical data. As I said, I turned off Google locations in 2019, but before then it was turned on for many, many years. So if I tap here on trips, I can see the trips that I took prior to turning off the location services. And if I scroll down, you can see there it is. In September 2019 was the last one that was recorded. But before that, all of the trips that I took, all of the travel that I took, Google was documenting here. Now, this can be a real blessing. If you travel, I really like having location services turned on when I'm traveling because it shows me where I was that day, reminds me of the hotel that I stayed at. It gives me all of the information. It's like a travel log or a travel diary of everything that happened. And I do mean everything. So if we scroll back and pick any of these trips, let's choose this one, Fort St. John in Calgary. Let's see exactly what happened that uh, in that particular trip. That was back in 2017, November of 2017. The places that I went, 
the destinations, which was a trip from Fort St. John then to Calgary. And here we see the Google Maps integration. This is why I, I mentioned Google Maps in the title. We can see my itinerary here in the in the timeline. And you can see that my day started out, and, and it's not just documenting the trip, but it's documenting everything that happened on this date. So you can see that I went from this location in first thing in the morning at eight in the morning, I went where to go. Oh, oh, look at that. I went to the studio. The studio is the gym that I work out at or that the, the, the gym that I used to work out at before it closed down because of COVID. So good on Steve. I was working out. I worked out the day of this trip. Then I went back home and then later in the day, I went, I drove to Vancouver International Airport. And from there I flew to the North Peace Regional Airport in Fort St. John. So there we see it. And here, this is where it really starts to get, I think, a lot of value to tracking this information on your timeline. This is personal value for you. Obviously, Google finds value in this, but I find a lot of value too. Because every picture that I took during that trip, every piece of documentation that I gathered is included in this itinerary. See, here's the photographs on the tarmac when we landed <laughs> in Fort St. John. I took a selfie. Great selfie, Steve. But you can see that all of that is documented here. If we continue on, we can see the hotel that I stayed at. All of that information is available here. Now, I told you, or I, I want to tell you that you have ownership over this data. Google's collected the information. It's stored here on your phone. It's obviously stored in the cloud. Google has access to it, but you have ownership of this information. And if you want to take any of these uh, different data points in your day and you want to delete them, I can just tap on the three dots and I can remove that from the agenda for the day. I can remove that and delete it, or I can delete the entire day or I can take all of the data, I can download it out of my computer, store it locally, and delete the cloud-based version so Google has no access to it. This information belongs to me, and Google gives us the tools within, the, within our Google account to manage the data as we see fit. So even if you're being tracked and you don't appreciate the fact or you didn't know that you're being tracked, you can mitigate the situation to a certain extent by taking control of the information, deleting the data that you want to delete and leaving the information up that you want. Now on a completely editorial note, I love using this for travel. Now I haven't been traveling a lot with the, with the pandemic, but once I get on a plane again and start traveling again, I will turn location services back on when I start to travel again, because I like having the documentation of my trips. I turn it off when I'm home. I don't want Google knowing when I go to the drugstore and when I go grocery shopping and when I go to the movies and when I go for a walk with my dog. It's none of their business and I don't really need that documented. But when I travel, I do appreciate all of the detail that is, that is gathered for me as a kind of a travel log or a travel diary your choice how you use it. But you will be able to make that decision based on your own criteria for privacy and how much you want to give up for the convenience of having your your journey documented. I want I also want to show this to you on the on the browser because you've seen it here on the smartphone, but let's show you the exact same information on the browser because we can access this information either on our smartphone or we can access it in our Google account on the computer as well. So I have Google Maps fired up here in my browser and it's my, the same account. Now I can go in and I go in and I manage the information in our Google account. You don't actually have to access this from inside of Google Maps. It's a convenience to do it here because it fits with the demo, but anywhere you are in any of your Google apps, you can go in and you can manage your Google account from within that app. And when we take a look here, we go into data and privacy, and here we have basically the same options as well as some extra ones that were available to us on our smartphone. And if I look down here in my uh, activity, in my location history, if I click and I open that, I can see that I can control all of the different settings for my location settings. I can choose to uh, turn it on if I want. I can also manage the history. I can go in here and I can delete, uh, I can delete events or I can revisit events. Now, again, when we open this up, because location history is off, we see pretty much a desert. We don't see any, any activities on my timeline. But each of these dots represents something that historically I have recorded as a part of my travels in the past. And let's go, let's try and look at for the same trip. I'm gonna go under the year was 2017. The month was December, no, November. And let's see if we can find that trip. And here it is, I believe, November 7th, that was the day. And there it is, yep. So here we see the same trip, the same day being laid out, the same information being shared here, and the same ability to be able to remove this stop, 
remove this detail if I want to delete this from the day. But I can also see where I journeyed. And if I scroll down here in the timeline, I have the same data. The same photos are available to me here. So I've got all of this really rich information from this day in my life in the past that's all been stored because of location services. Whether or not you find this awesome or you find this creepy is up to you. It's an amazing feat of technology and it's built into our Google account. It's up to you to choose how to use it. And I hope I've given you a, an awareness and an understanding of exactly what location services are and how you can use it to your benefit and protect your privacy inside of the Google system. Now, I hope you found today's video useful. If you have, a like, a share, and of course, a subscribe would be greatly appreciated. I would also love to hear your comments. Are you the sort of person who has location services turned on all the time? Is it turned off all the time because you are very concerned about your privacy? Or are you like me? Do you hit the middle of the road and do you sometimes turn it on when you're traveling, but when you're home, you want it turned off? I would love to hear your comments and how you approach it. And before we leave, one last thought. Every week here at Dotto Tech, we host a free tutorial webinar called Webinar Wednesday. It's a training on some aspect of productivity or content creation, and I would love to invite you to join us. They're completely free, and I believe they're a little bit of awesome. I hope to see you there. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming the castle.